Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Ah, the classics. Humans are a little weird when it comes to classics. We congregate together in ridiculous numbers to celebrate our affection and our appreciation for, well, all sorts of things, really. Music, movies, books, comic books, even games. Numbers so significant, in fact, that it's statistically near inevitable that at some point, something hinky is going to happen. But no one would be, or was, ready for this level of weird. Tonight's tale of occulted origins, LSD Dream Emulator. A few years ago, while searching on X for paranormal or creepy games, I came across an obscure Japanese PlayStation game called LSD Dream Emulator. Now, despite the game releasing in extremely limited numbers, many ROM sites had it available for download. So naturally, I downloaded it, converted it, and then started playing. Unfortunately, the ISO was corrupted, or incorrectly ripped, maybe as I couldn't get any further than the title screen, and when I did, all I saw was a mess of color and heard a strange fuzzing sound like radio static. I tried re-downloading the ISO multiple times, tried it from different websites, but every single one was the same. Strange colors, fuzzy static sounds. I tried posting questions on various gaming sites, but hardly anyone had heard of the game, and even fewer had played it. I learned that the game had a cult following, both here and in Japan, and I eventually found a small Yahoo fan group dedicated to the game. I posted a question asking if anyone had managed to get the game working on emulators, and a few days later, I received an answer. Hi. I was one of the members of the ripping group who released the LSD rip. We managed to successfully rip the game, but we never managed to get it working on emulators, only the original hardware. By this point, I'd practically given up on it. I didn't have a PlayStation console, and my attention span was short. And I'd long since moved on to other things like Aversion and Yume Nikki. Then earlier this year, LSD was released on the Japanese PlayStation Network. I remembered how much I'd tried to play it, even browsing eBay a few times in the vague hope that a cheap copy would surface. So I made an account, bought a JPN PSN card, and purchased the game. And after downloading and installing, I began playing it. The PlayStation logo came up as usual, but with SCEI instead, as it was a Japanese game. There was no copyright screen, but they'd removed it from several of the other games as well. The intro video started playing after that. Different colored words bounced across the screen, spelling out linking the sapient dream multiple times. Apparently, this is what LSD stood for. I pressed the circle button, and the game went to the title screen. There was no press start screen, it just went straight to a screen with four or five options. Um, start, save, load, and options above start. There was a line of text telling you what day you were on. It displayed day one. So I chose start. One of the things that I'd learned from the Yahoo group was the first day always started in a Japanese house with three floors. The contents of the house were essentially random. The entire game was played in a first person view. I walked along the hallway I started in and walked into a bookcase and the screen faded to white. That's the strange thing about the game. You can interact with pretty much anything. Walking into anything moves you to a new area, which the game calls linking. The white faded away, and I was in a field. I couldn't see very far into the distance because every area had a fog a few feet ahead of you. The graphics were also basic, with most having almost no texture to them. 
I walked onwards, eventually bumping into a tree, which sent me to yet another area. This time, things had gotten a bit more sinister. I was in a dark city standing on a metal pier. A boat loomed in the fog out on the water, and lampposts lit the streets. I walked down into the road and came across alleyways. Graffiti covered some of the walls, uh, strange multicolored eyes stared out at me. Then I heard a noise and the screen flashed quickly. I turned around. Just behind me, a man had appeared. He was wearing a gray hat and a long trench coat. He was walking slowly towards me, almost gliding across the ground. I tried to walk backwards to get away, but my controller wasn't responding and he was getting closer. For a split second, two red dots glared out from under his hat, and then the screen flashed again. This time I was back in the house. Something had changed, though. The textures of the walls were replaced with pictures of real violence. Women being raped, children torn apart, cannibalism, torture, a Japanese man breaking his own fingers with a hammer. As I moved through the house, the pictures slowly began getting worse, and the music began distorting and slowing down. The corridor was longer than it was before, and it was getting darker. I somehow knew that this was the end. He was. I moved onwards, the bile rising from my throat and fighting the urge to vomit as the pictures began escalating into terrible levels of obscenity and violence. A few steps forward, a man removing a young boy's legs. A few more, a pregnant woman cutting her own fetus out. Further still, a gang of men cut a cow to pieces, wrapping the internal organs around their bodies. Closer to the end, people being forced to eat the corpse of a child, vomiting as they ate parts of him. Finally, I reached the end of the corridor. The screen faded to black and a line of text appeared on the screen. I wrote the link down quickly and a few seconds later, the game faded to white again and returned to the title screen. This time, the status said, Day Zero. I tried to choose start again, but the game wouldn't let me continue. I restarted the PS3, and the status went back to day one. Before I played it again, I tried the link. It still worked, and a page came up filled with Japanese writing. Further down the page, there was a picture of the gray man, as he normally appeared. Now, I can't read Japanese, but one of my friends could. He had lived in Japan for a few years, so he could read and speak the language fluently. I copied the writing down and called him up. After he showed up, I spent the next few hours telling him what had happened. Obviously, he didn't initially believe me. Who would? But still, he agreed to take a look at the writing on the page. Despite several tries, I couldn't get the web page back up again, so I handed him the copy that I had written. He glanced at it for a few minutes and then suddenly turned white. He handed it back to me and sat down on the couch. He said nothing for what seemed like five minutes. Then he told me what he thought it said. If you are reading this, well done. You have seen the man as he is. What he did to me as I slept, as I dreamed his dark nightmare. You have also seen it. Those violent images were him. He had no form, only the dream man. He caused all this, those events in the images. He took those innocents and possessed them. He made them do it. He made me make that game. As he finished, he stood up, grabbed his coat, and said, Whatever you saw in that game, don't tell me anything about it. And then he left. The next week, he went back to Japan. I couldn't touch another console after that. I destroyed the PS3, and I replaced my computer entirely. 
A few weeks after he left for Japan, I got a call. He'd killed a woman and then committed suicide. The woman that he had killed, Osamu Sato, was the lead designer on LSD. So, yes, those bits of entertainment that we find we love can have a pronounced effect on us. One hopes it doesn't affect everyone in such an extreme fashion, however. One hopes. Stay scary, wildlings. Let the obsession go lest it twist you and make the most of your nights. <laughs>